I had the opportunity recently to sit down with my good friend Brian Fowler. Brian is a cinematographer, he's a steady cam operator, he's also the owner of an area mirror. Now, the Amira is definitely not an entry-level camera. It's actually the opposite of entry-level. It's got a price tag of right around $60,000. If you ever wondered what $60,000 would buy you in a camera, let's talk to Brian and find out. Before I bought the Amira, a friend of mine said, why are you buying that? And I said, it works really great. I love it. It's such a nice camera. It's not really the good answer that you want to have in your head when you're going to spend fifty or sixty thousand uh, dollars on a camera. So there's different levels of a mirror, and we bought, uh, we have the premium. What that does buy me is reliability, not just in the camera on set, but in a company that's been around for a long time. They've been doing it for a long time. They've had a long line of of um, motion picture cameras. The Alexa has had a long run. It's still a valid camera. And so you have that support behind you. So if you're looking at other cameras and their specs and what they do and what they can do and then how much they cost, you would go, why would you choose this? Well, that's because those cameras look very similar on paper. But when you get them out in the environment, when you put them up on your shoulder and you start using them and using them and abusing them, for me, that's where I could tell the difference between the Alexa line and the other lines of cameras that I've used. It's a user interface between me and my shoulder and my hands and my brain. If I have to stop the creative process for what I'm trying to work on, which sometimes is a struggle <laughs> to try to come up with something great, um, if I have to stop that, and f try to figure out, wait, was this the button that I do? How do I, am I supposed to be exposing like, th what, you know, that's not good for me in a creative environment. I need to just be able to go, oh yeah, bip, 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 and it's, and it's done. One great example was moving from the C300 to the Amira. The director said, can we do 200 frames a second? That does 200 frames a second, right? I said, yeah, it does 200 frames a second. Okay, can you do that? Sure, flip, flip. One of them was a quick, the quick button to go to 200 frames a second, and then I needed to lose my ND because light dropped, so I went doo -doo and cleared my ND out, and it literally took seven, eight seconds. And he was used to the C300, which was pull it off my shoulder, go through this menu, da 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 And I was like, I'm ready. He's like, you ready? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. He's like, oh, that's great. So all day we were bouncing back and forth from 24 to 48 to 200, at just like a blip, 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 and it was and it was super fast. And that right there was a great. I mean, it kept production flowing. And those are things you can't put a value on not stopping the set. I'm sure some people can put a value on how much it costs to stop a set, but I can't. <laughs> I want to be able to just seamlessly move move through things. So in a documentary situation, or even a feature film situation, or actually any situation, there are times when you're running out of light, you're running out of time, there's something that maybe, it's an, something that only happens once, and you need to be able to operate the camera quickly and effectively without having to worry about things, without having to stop things or slow things down. So there are, there are a lot of cameras out there that look great, small ones, big ones, expensive ones, cheap ones, but show me one that looks better than the Amira and the Alexa. I dare ya! So, uh, all kidding aside, I've shot with a lot of cameras, and I have yet to see an image from a digital camera that looks more like film than the image from the Alexa and the Amira. Going back to the days of film, shooting with airy cameras versus other makes, I remember having film jams and other kinds of problems with the other cameras. Airy cameras, they just ran smoothly. They just worked like they were supposed to. And in the digital era, that's what I've observed as well. So these cameras really have a reputation of being kind of bomb-proof, being tanks. And uh, it's my observation that that reputation is well-deserved. So if you want to learn more about the Amira, I've got several other videos in this series 
Going to learn more about maybe what Ari might want to improve with the next generation Amira. Learning more about workflow. We're going to take a physical tour of the camera. And uh, if you want to, if you want to learn about these cameras, I would recommend that you subscribe because that way YouTube will send you a little notice when I go ahead and release these videos. And that way you'll get a chance to know when I actually complete them and post them. So anyway, like, comment, subscribe. A lot of these videos have a lot of um, technical terms also. I'm happy to answer those questions in the comments. So hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in future installments.